This is Pam coming to you from Stationery Nerd. Today we're going to look at the Clairefontaine. This is the cloth bound basic notebook. It is soft cover. So let's take a look inside and see what we have. First of all, we do have an elastic band here and it's connected on the back cover with these little doohickeys. What are they called? I don't know, but they're like metal and so it just goes all the way straight through and connects to the elastic. So if your elastic comes out or breaks, like it does in a lot of notebooks, it's pretty easy to um, replace that and get it fixed. So the only complaint that I have is that the elastic is kind of wimpy. Um, it would be nice if it was a little bit tighter, but I guess because it's got that kind of fastener in the back that you could technically make that elastic a little bit tighter. You just need to um, finagle your way um, through these fasteners. So anyway, um, I got the lined version of this notebook, but let's take a look at the specs. So Claire Fontaine, I paid $8.26 for this on Amazon and it measures 8.25 by 6 which is true A5 size. Um, this is actually my spec sheet that I refer to um, on all of the journal reviews that I've done for the website. You can download this spreadsheet for free. It's available at stationarynerd.com slash journals and it it's a four page document that includes all 30 of the journals that I've reviewed. So um, this uh, I was just checking what other kinds of paper. So I did get the lined, but it's also available as a square grid or as a dot grid. So um, lots of choices there. And this, it is a soft cover, but it's actually a, a pretty sturdy chipboard kind of um, cover. It's got a light texture on it. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that, but there is a texture. And then the only branding on here is the logo at the bottom. So um, super classy looking and it is called the cloth bound and that's because there's this cloth piece that covers the spine and then the cover actually is over top of that um, cloth spine. So you can kind of see it at the end where um, the two meet up. But this is a, um, this is actually a glued binding. So you do not have signatures in this book which the problem with a glued binding is that it doesn't always lay straight uh, or lay flat. So you're going to need to train this carefully because the problem with um, a glue binding is that um, pages have a tendency to fall out. Um, so in order to get this to lay, to lay flat, you do need to train the pages to be open and this is the way I do it. Just take a few pages from the front, a few pages from the back, Press that open with your hand. Um, you're using a little bit of pressure, not, not a ton of pressure. And yes, Pounce is back. She likes to hang out. <laughs> Things are always more fun with cats in the house, right? So once you train it to be open, then it does actually stay flat um, as you are writing. This notebook has 192 pages and it is a bright white color. And um, so let me talk to you a little bit about the Clairefontaine paper. There is a misconception that the Rhodia paper and the Clairefontaine paper are the same paper. They're not actually. Um, Rhodia and Clairefontaine are owned by the same company. I can never remember which one owns which. Does Rhodia own Clairefontaine or does Clairefontaine own Rhodia? It doesn't matter because what they did is because both of those notebooks, and I do have I do have the Rhodia here, because both of these manufacturers have been around forever and they both have excellent paper, when the two companies merged, it was decided that Claire Fontaine would keep the formula for their paper and Rhodia would keep the formula for their paper. They're manufactured in different plants and never the twain shall meet. So that was the decision 
um, by the manufacturers and I think that it's a good decision. Both of them are really good, but they're different, but they're owned by the same family. So let's just call them brother and sister, it's kind of like that. So we're gonna do a review of the Rhodia um, at another time, but while I've got this here, why don't we take a look at the difference in the color of the pages. So the Clairefontaine, bright white. Rhodia, definitely ivory, almost, I would actually call this cream or more in the yellow family. So as you're shopping, these are the two color differences. So, all right, Rhodia is going away because we'll do that on another video. And let's continue on with what we have for the Clairefontaine. So let me see what else I need to tell you about this. Um, the paper is actually 90 GSM. And um, normally I shy away from anything that's less than 100 just because I really hate ghosting. But the Clairefontaine paper is so good that 90 is going to be just fine. So let's take a look at the pen test and how that turned out. Um, we have a variety of pens. So first of all, I did use two different highlighters and I used the Sharpie liquid um, highlighters just because those are the two wettest highlighters that I have. And then I just have a variety of black pens. Um, I figured it was easiest to test with all one color. And I'm not gonna go through all of these today in this video, uh, but I will list everything below down in the description. Um, but I did grab a variety, a fountain pen, um, gel pens, fine liners, all kinds of goodies. So take a look at that list, or also we're gonna talk about it right here. So let's take a close look at this paper and how it did. So there is a coating on this paper, which is awesome because then it reduces the bleed through and um, ghosting on the other side of the paper. However, because of that coating, you have a problem with ink not drying immediately or as quickly as you're used to on other paper. So this right here, that little smudge, that's because this Sharpie pen, which they always dry really fast, wasn't dry completely when I stuck my finger in it. And um, same with the Pilot, a little bit of smudging there. So let me just show you actually. This is the Sharpie steel pen. This is just a fine point pen. So if we um, go there and you can see that was a one second test. One, two, three. And then let's do a five second. One, two, three, four, five. So that's much better. Um, so you just need to be careful when you're putting your finger <laughs> over your ink just to not smudge. So um, because we've got that coating, when you look on the back, you see nothing that is bleeding through. And in fact, there is hardly any ghosting at all which is awesome for a 90 GSM paper. So closer up, um, I guess I actually have to like hold it down so you can see that there are words on the other side, but it's such good paper that um, you can't even tell of any ghosting. So I'm gonna actually call this no ghosting at all. But um, great little notebook if you're looking for something um, small and portable. I kind of love that it is um, a soft cover so that, I mean, it's something that you can just like grab in your hand and take with you and um, throw it in the backpack or in your purse and it's a really great portable option and you can't go wrong with the paper. So anyway, that's what we've got so far with the Clairefontaine. We'll get into the Rhodia. Um, at another time, but uh, just know that those two papers are different, but they're equally good. So that's all for now. Give this uh, video a thumbs up, and why don't you leave me a comment? Tell me if you have tried this paper or some other version of a notebook with Clairefontaine paper. Tell me about um, what you use it for and how you like it. So until next time, we will talk to you later.
Bye.